this pork chop is so good. This is the best pork chop I have ever had, and it's all because of my kitchen pepper. This stuff is amazing. Thanks for joining us today as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. As far as I'm concerned, kitchen pepper is an important part of any kitchen in the 18th century. It starts to pop up in cookbooks in the late 18th century. This is Charlotte Mason's cookbook. It's one of the first references that you can find, 1777, and she gives a recipe for kitchen pepper. I believe it's a much earlier concept. We just don't see it referenced because it's something that's so common in the kitchens. It's a standard spice mix. And as you go through recipes through the 18th century, you'll find these same spices showing up over and over and over in all these recipes. So why not just put them all together in a pre-mixed um, portion? And you'll even find later recipes that are used in places like uh, chemist shops or pharmacies, or it's almost like a general store would sell this pre-mix of spices. So it's a perfect thing to have, especially in a situation like this. Um, if you're on the frontier, you don't have a lot of room for a bunch of spice jars. Uh, or you're traveling and you want to bring along spice to put on your food, but you don't, again, have a whole lot of space for that. So you can bring just one jar, just one file, of spices and you get all the normal flavors that you're expecting. So these 18th century kitchen spice mixes are that ancestor to all those spice mixes you'll find in the grocery store today, whether they're regional spice mixes or maybe they're for a particular ingredient, maybe they're meat rubs. They all kind of connect back to this kitchen pepper spice mix idea that shows up in these late 18th century cookbooks. Let me read to you this one out of Charlotte Mason's The Lady's Assistant. This is 1777. This one's simple, but I like it. It's a really good mix. One ounce of ginger and then pepper, cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg, half ounce each, and then six ounces of salt. Mix this well. Keep it dry so she definitely wants that sealed up. It doesn't get moisture in it. She says it's a great addition to all brown sauces, but in later references to these kitchen pepper spice mixes, we see them being used in all sorts of situations, in meat rubs and in other dishes where you just want to add that normal spice mix that you're used to. A wonderful little spice mix. Let's put this together. So let's look at our spices. There's a lot to learn here about what's going on in the 18th century. What's our base? Spice uh, that's in this mix, well, it's salt. Salt is the least expensive item on the list here. Uh, so we have, that's making up a large portion of it. More than half of our mix is salt. So we've got a lot of salt in here, but the next one that we've got is ginger. And here's the ginger. We have twice as much ginger as we have the other items. Now that might be because we want a lot of ginger flavor in here, but it's also because ginger is one of the least expensive spices that are coming in in this situation. So again, we're being economic. We're being frugal by having a lot of ginger flavor coming in here. And that kind of bulks up our flavor. We've got pepper, so common along with all these other ones that show up in the recipe books. But pepper is right up there with salt. Almost everyone says salt, add pepper. So pepper's in here. Um, we've got nutmeg. It's one of the more expensive ones. And some of these recipes, maybe nutmeg is missing because it is so expensive. And they'll replace nutmeg with something less expensive called Jamaica pepper, or we call it allspice. That is another, um, kind of brings in that same aromatic note. Most of these are not very aromatic, um, but nutmeg is. So uh, that one might drop out, especially if we wanted a less expensive mix, or maybe it's just got a little nutmeg. That's the other thing about this, is that these things are very variable. We can adjust this. We can customize this mix for ourselves any way we'd like. Maybe we don't like one of these spices. Uh, maybe we're not a big fan of cloves, so we can drop cloves out, add something else, or leave it all together. So it's very adjustable. We're very personalizable. 
and you'll see that happening as we look at um, different recipes as they go into the 19th century. They adjust, they get less expensive, or maybe some of the flavors drop out because they're not popular anymore. Something like nutmeg sort of disappears after a while because it's just not as popular. And we also have cinnamon and cloves in there. Uh, all of these are nice and ground up and that's mentioned. Even the idea that we want to have in some of those later recipes, we wanna make sure everything is ground and ground finely, um, even before the mix. And then they actually mention the idea that you wanna wait until you make the final one to grate your nutmeg. You don't want that grated beforehand because it's, it's losing its aromatic flavor. Now, we can adjust these and they might've been adjusted for a lot of different reasons, both economic reasons, uh, maybe there are cultural reasons. So some spices drop out in different cultures. Maybe you're German and you want caraway seeds or something like some of these other spices that are more common in different uh, cultures. So we also have some variation from whether it's an expensive mix or whether it's got some, you know, some different cultural changes in it. So there's a lot of variation we can do personally. But this one's a nice base mix right there from the late 18th century. So here is our kitchen pepper, and I am so excited to try this out. Let's do it now. I wanna try this out as a rub on some pork chops and see just how it turns out. Let's try it out. This looks tremendous. This is our pork chop rubbed in our kitchen pepper. Let's find out. Very spicy and I really love it. Such a wonderful complex uh, batch of spices and it really comes through each and every one of them, kind of hits at different levels. If I was gonna make my personal spice mix, I would take this Maybe add something like a little cayenne. I might double the nutmeg, but that's just me. But a little cayenne or something else to give it a, a top note, you know, kind of bite right at the beginning. But that's the nice part about this. We can customize it any way we want. I love this whole concept and the ability to just bring all the spices you need right there in one jar. I love this whole idea and such a wonderful addition to 18th century cooking. This is a great way for you to bring the 18th century directly into your kitchen. You don't have to have a special recipe. You don't have to try out some, something strange out of the cookbooks. You can try something like this. You can use it almost each and every day if you'd like. And it's got so many great complex things going on with it. And it brings in flavors from the 18th century that we're not used to. Maybe in a dish like this, we get the cloves and the cinnamon on a meat dish. Boy, that's something completely different, isn't it? So I love this one and it's so easy for just anyone to do. If you'd like to see kitchen pepper being used on an 18th century dish, try this ribs recipe, you'll love it. <laughs> 